Hi again. Welcome to lecture two. Hope the last lecture wasn't too much to digest. Before we delve into each specialty, we must know what they are. So this lecture is dedicated to the translation of these specialty names. We'll also be discussing the basic pharmacology terms. No, no, I'm not going to talk about Cipol Sulfo P450. That's cytochrome P450, if you're wondering. We're just going to talk about how to discuss medication and prescriptions with your Chinese patients. To say outpatient, you can say mengen. To describe the department as a whole, you can say mengen bu. For inpatient, that will be zhu yuan, and the department zhu yuan bu. Zhen just meaning clinic, so mengen just means clinic that's through the door. And zhu meaning living, yuan is the abbreviation for yi yuan, so zhu yuan actually just means living the hospital. One thing to bear in mind is that in most Chinese systems, you don't actually need a referral to visit specialty clinics. So, for example, I can just go to the registry counter and ask for ophthalmology same day appointments. It may be a good idea to explain to your patient that each insurance in the U.S. has a different system for referral. And here is a list of medical specialties. Family medicine is 家庭医生 or 全科医生全科 meaning general, all the specialties. Urgent care is 急诊 or 紧急护理科 Emergency room will be 急救室救 meaning to rescue, to resuscitate. So it's slightly different from 急诊 which only means an urgent clinic. Dentistry is 牙科 pediatrics 儿科 Internal medicine, 内科 and general surgery, 普外科 Obstetrics and gynecology will be 妇产科 Cardiology, 心内科 Neurology, 神经科 Psychiatry, 精神科 Oncology has two names. It's either 肿瘤科肿瘤 meaning tumor, or 癌症科癌症 meaning cancer. Orthopedics is 骨科 Ophthalmology, 眼科 Chinese medicine will be 中医 and integrative medicine, 中西医结合 CE just meaning Western medicine. Dermatology, 皮肤科 Endocrinology, 内分泌科 ENT will be 耳鼻喉科 and gastroenterology, 肠道内科 For the inpatient ward, you can say 内科病房 and the intensive care unit, 重症监护室重症 meaning critical, and 监护 meaning to monitor. The operating room will be 手术室 Hospice will be 临终关怀 and palliative care, 姑息治疗 The difference being hospice is initiated when life expectancy is less than six months, and palliative care provides relief for pain and distressing symptoms. So for hospice, 临终关怀临 meaning near and 终 meaning the end. Physical medicine and rehabilitation (PM and R) will be 复健科 To describe physical therapy, that will be 物理疗法 Nurse will be called 护士 and nurse practitioner 护理医师 Pharmacist will be 药剂师 and paramedics 急救员 Dietitian 营养师营养 meaning nutrition. Acupuncturist, 针灸师 and chiropractor, 针骨师 Homeopathy is 顺势疗法 Thankfully, it's not that popular in China. We already talked about 门诊 and 住院 Another distinction between the specialties is 内科 and 外科内科 meaning internal medicine or medical specialties. And 外科 meaning surgical specialties. So, for example, 心内科 will be cardiology, 心胸外科 will be cardiothoracic surgery, 神经内科 neurology, 神经外科 neurosurgery. 
the procedure of the surgery itself is called shou shu. Another common point of confusion is shen jing ke, which is neurology, and jing shen ke, which is psychiatry. Shen jing means nerve, and jing shen means the spirit. Also, you should never call someone shen jing bing or jing shen bing, because both of them are derogatory terms. As we discussed before, you should also avoid ning you bing ma or ning you wen ti ma when asking patients whether they have any medical conditions. These are derogatory terms as well, all similar to calling someone crazy. The correct way to ask if someone has a neurological issue, you can say, Ning you shen jing ji bing ma. And to ask someone if they have any psychiatrical issues, you can say, Ning you ren he jing shen lei ji bing ma, or xing li ji bing ma. Lastly, urgent care and emergency room are commonly the same in China, so it may be a good idea to discuss the difference with your patient. Now let's talk about pharmacology. To say medication, you can say yao, yao ping, or yao wu. They all mean the same. Supplements will be bu ping, or yin yang ping. Pharmacy will be yao dian. Traditional Chinese medicine, depending on the context, will be zhong yi, or zhong yao. We'll discuss about it a little bit later. Western medicine will be xi yi, or xi yao. Prescription will be chu fang, and over the counter will be fei chu fang yao. So prescription medication is chu fang yao. General medication tong yong yao, and brand name medication shang ping yao. Shang ping meaning a commercial product. Side effect will be fu zuo yong, and drug interactions yao wu xiang hu zuo yong. Dosage of a medication is ji liang. A pill will be yao pian, and a capsule jiao nang. Enteric coated medications will be chang rong yao, rong meaning to dissolve. A patch will be tie pian, tie meaning to stick or sticky. Cream will be ruan gao. An inhaler is xi ru qi. Or another common term is peng wu qi. Wu meaning a mist, and peng meaning to spread. Eye drop is yan yao shui or di yan ye. Both are commonly accepted. An intravenous will be jing mai zhu she. A common term is diao yan shui. Diao meaning to hang something off a pole, and yan shui meaning saline. Traditional Chinese medicine can refer to both the system of knowledge or the traditional medications. To refer to the system of knowledge of traditional Chinese medicine, you can say zhong yi. To refer to the medications, that will be zhong yao. So for example, to translate, are you seeing a traditional Chinese medicine doctor? You would ask, lin zai kan zhong yi ma? And to ask, are you taking traditional Chinese medications? That will be, 您在吃中药吗? Also keep in mind that just like Western medicine, Chinese medicine also employs multiple treatment modalities. So don't assume that the patient is taking herbal medicine when they're seeing a Chinese medicine doctor. Here are some terms that you can use to discuss medications with your patient. To ask, what medications do you take? Do you take them as prescribed? That would be, 您在服用什么药? Again, prescription is 处方 按照 meaning following What do you take this medication for? 您服用这个药是为了什么? When do you take this medication? 您什么时候吃这个药? After waking up? 起床后? Before bed? 睡前? Before or after food? 饭前 or 饭后? What's not written here is three times a day or four times a day, for example. That will be 一天三次 or 一天四次. Do you have any troubles with taking medications? 您用药有什么困难吗? 有困难 meaning having trouble. Do you have any troubles with obtaining medications? 
。您买药有什么困难吗 ？Do you have a pill box? 您有药盒吗 ？It sounds like you're reducing the amount of medications you're taking. Can we talk about the reason why? 听上去您在减少服药的剂量，我们可以谈一谈为什么吗 ？This will be a good open-ended question to ask your patient about their medication use. I remember looking at the electronic health records with a red dot next to someone's name, which means they are medication non-compliant. However, in these records, there seldom was a deeper dive into the reason why. Medication non-compliance is a loaded term. And the reason I'm discussing it here is that you may see many of the contributing factors below commonly seen in Chinese patients for one reason or another. These factors are: the patient not understanding the medication regimen, the patient not perceiving the medication to have efficacy, wary to side effects, benefit versus cost, the complexity of managing these medications, an inaccurate. Irrational or conflicting beliefs about taking medications. The patient may also perceive alternatives available to their treatment. So, for example, a patient with limited English proficiency would have some difficulty understanding their medication regimen, especially if it's written down in English. If the doctor did not use an interpreter to explain the efficacy of the medication, they may not perceive it as useful. The patient may also prefer traditional Chinese medicine to Western medicines for some sort of long-term diseases. These factors are quoted from the article from JAMA: Medication Non-Adherence, a Diagnosable and Treatable Medical Condition. Again, I have no conflict of interest to report. The text in the slide in the workbook is written by me, Frank, and we had additional help from members of the CMIC at UCLA. The video editing is made by Jasmine. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in lecture three.